Who's been hosting? Good evening. My name is Derek Bailey, and I'm with the city's public works department and the traffic engineering group. And with me tonight are some other city staff members. We've got Kadad uh, and John and Steve. You guys wave. They're uh, in the traffic engineering group with me. We've got some of the transportation planning group with me. Rob, uh, Jessica, Stacy, Peter, Steve. And uh, we've also got some folks from our streets design group in the back. Ashley, Laura, Andrew. We're very glad you're here tonight. It's uh, amazing we've got such a great turnout. Um, we, I've got a short presentation for you. And it's going to be like a little over 10 minutes or so. And then what we're actually going to do is roll out these uh, big long maps that we have on the table. And we can hunt around the table and ask questions and point out some features. Uh, we need to get your feedback on this project in order to move forward. So um, with that, I'm going to get started. Uh, a quick outline of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, purpose, why we're here tonight. Uh, the background, how we got to this point, uh, grant opportunity that we have next spring, uh, the project description, and finally we need your input and how you can let us know um, your thoughts on this project. So the purpose, uh, we've got a grant opportunity next spring. Uh, it's a traffic safety grant and we need your input as to whether or not we should apply for it. Uh, just, just some background, I'm sure everybody knows um, Cliff Drive used to be part of State Route 225. Up until January this year, it was a state highway. Caltrans owned and operated it. In January, it was relinquished to the city. Uh, so now it's a city street, so the city is responsible for the operations and maintenance of Cliff Drive. Um, so just in red, that's, uh, that's the old Cliff Drive. It included Las Casitas, Cliff Drive, and all the way over to the streets in the neighborhood of uh, Castillo and Montecito Streets intersection. So during the relinquishment process, uh, myself and some other staff members, we attended some town hall meetings and a lot of you folks were at those town hall meetings. And we got a lot of feedback of what you wanted to see done to Cliff Drive once it became a city street. And uh, what we heard is that you had some safety concerns and there's certain traffic safety features that should be done on Cliff Drive. Some of the things that we heard included Cliff Drive should have bike lanes, Cliff Drive should have improved and more frequent pedestrian crossing opportunities. Uh, Cliff Drive should have improved lighting uh, and a continuous center left turn lane. That, that's not the whole list, that's just some of the things we heard. We also heard uh, people would look, like it to look nicer, aesthetics. Um, speeds were a concern on Cliff Drive, so a whole host of things. Um, we also heard from Santa Barbara City College. They've got some concerns about some of the traffic conditions that are happening around their campus. So the grant opportunity that we have next spring is called the Highway Safety Improvement Program. It's federal money that's administered by the state. And the way they award money <clears throat> is we have to propose improvements, and those improvements have to be based on collision history. So there has to be a pattern of collisions um, that we would be fixing with this grant. Uh, project description, we think we can get about $900,000, we think. Uh, that would require a 10% local match, that's the way the grant works, and that would be $90,000 that the city would have to contribute. Uh, the project would include bike lanes, uh, continue, and so um, it would be continuing what was done a few years ago, so then it would be continuous all the way from Las Casitas to Loma Alta. Um, a continuous center left turn lane, there's sections of Cliff Drive that don't have that right now, and as well a new traffic signal at Santa Barbara City College's West Campus Driveway. And uh, I'm just going to pause for a moment. Uh, Rob Dayton, our principal transportation planner, um, he's just going to say a few words about bike planning in the city and some of the things that he's working on right now. This is a commercial interruption. <laughs> so one of the things that was interesting about this process is we're actually doing, in the process of doing a bicycle master plan, we haven't had an update in, in 10 years, and so we're going to be doing that. And this is a bicycle-oriented project. So one of, one of the things we did is we went to council and we said, hey, do you really want us to move forward with this at the Mesa prior to the Bicycle Master Plan? Council said, absolutely, this is a good opportunity, and that's why we're here tonight. But I just want you to know that next year, we're going to be involved, the city's going to be involved in a Bicycle Master Plan, and we're going to be coming specifically to the Mesa neighborhood to talk to you about what you want to see in the area of bicycle improvements. So um, this is, we just want to make sure that you kind of 
put that in your head just distinguish it this is not the bicycle master plan update that's coming next year this is just an opportunity that our amazing traffic engineer Derek Bailey came upon and you're presenting to you tonight so thank you thanks Rob okay so just to paint the picture of how this potential project fits in with some of the other things that are happening along the old state road 225 corridor uh, in red this is the limits of what this project would be so it's um, uh, on the left, that's the section right out here, um, coming up from Las Casitas all the way over to Meigs. And that red dot on the right uh, represents the new traffic signal at Santa Barbara City College's West Campus Driveway. This dashed line, that's the restriping that happened in 2011, a few years ago. We're working on a roundabout right now. Uh, this roundabout is in design, and it's going to be at the intersection of Cliff Drive and Las Casitas. Uh, it's in design, like I said, and construction should start sometime in 2016 and should wrap up in late 2016, early 2017. So what we would be aiming for is to finish this project right at the same time so they all seem to happen as one continuous project. Uh, we also just got grant funding in August um, for the environmental uh, planning and design of a new separated walking and biking path along Las Casitas Road and along Modoc. And this is a really significant effort because there's a lot of environmental resources along that corridor. Um, so it's a good opportunity for us uh, to do this design up front. And then our plan is a few years from now, once the design is done, we'll apply for more grant money for the construction. So as you can see, there's something happening all the way along the corridor. Just for everyone that's not familiar with the restriping that happened um, a few years ago, I'm just going to pop up here. Here's the intersection of Meigs and Cliff, and to the left, it's still two lanes in each direction. And as we go to the right, it transitions from two lanes in each direction. And now you can see we're down to one lane in each direction here, just east of Lighthouse. There are some drawbacks with this project, and we just want to make sure that everybody understands the benefits and trade-offs. This isn't going to be as straightforward as the section that happened a few years ago between Meigs and City College. Um, the tra the uh, traffic around the shopping center, uh, it's a lot more complex than, the, than what's happening in between Meigs and City College. Uh, there's a lot of commercial driveways, and a lot of people turning in out, a lot of turning movements to those driveways. Um, also, there's a complex intersection right over here of uh, Flora Vista and Mesa Lane where they come into Cliff Drive and they're offset from one another. That's a complicated intersection and that creates some challenges um, as far as this design and I'm going to show you in a minute uh, what the benefits and trade-offs are at that intersection. We want you to understand everything and we want you to um, basically buy off on this project and tell us whether or not we should make this grant application next spring. Here is the intersection of Mesa Lane and Flora Vista that I was talking about. And as you can see, there's no room along the curb lines right here for bike lanes, um, especially in this section right here. Um, we looked at a few different alternatives for this intersection. How do we get bike lanes through here? Widening is really expensive and it's not feasible within this grant application. We looked at a small roundabout even. Um, would actually work really well from a traffic delay perspective. It would keep traffic moving, uh, be pretty good for bikes and pedestrians as well, uh, but it's expensive. Uh, it be well over a million dollars and again more than uh, something this particular grant would um, cover. So we're left at trying to reconfigure the striping somehow, work within the existing curb lines. This traffic signal is not your typical traffic signal. Um, because these streets are offset, these side streets get served separately. So one side goes, and then the other side goes. At a normal intersection, uh, they come in and meet one another. Um, the side streets both get served at the same time. Um, but because they get served separately, it means there's less green time available for Cliff Drive. So it takes longer to serve the side streets because they get served separately, less green time for Cliff Drive. Uh, because of that, we really need to stick to two lanes in each direction through this intersection. If we don't, the queue lengths through here would be over 600 feet long during peak periods. So um, we didn't think that was really feasible. 
Um, so our, the opportunity that we have left is to do with these left turn lanes. So you notice here, there's side-by-side -side left turn lanes. Side-by-side -side left turn lanes. And those left turn lanes can each hold about three vehicles, like so. So here's what we're proposing. It's back-to-back -back left turn lanes. And this is the big trade-off here. And we really want to make sure everybody understands how this would work. See the old side-by-side -side left turn lanes kind of in the background. So what we've done now is we've created this back-to-back -back left turn lane right here. We've also pulled the stop cars out a little bit into the intersection. Um, this can hold two cars in each direction, not three. Uh, so here's the trade-off. Um, we know that about 10% of the time during peak periods, a third car usually comes along. And they're going to do that. So that's the trade-off. So about 10% of the time during the peak periods, um, that number one through lane will be blocked. And um, we just want to make sure you understand that. Um, this is really the only feasible configuration in order to get bike lanes through this section. Um, like I said, we, we call it spill back when the vehicle spills out into the, the next lane. About 10% of the time during the peak periods. Um, another feature that you'll notice at this intersection is we're showing raised islands here and here. Because these left turners are going to pull up a little bit farther, they're going to have a harder time seeing the traffic signal indications. So we actually have to put another one in the middle of the street so that it's easier for them to see. Darren, question for you? Can I ask a question on short way? Um, actually, if, if you have questions, the as soon as we're done with the presentation here, um, city staff members are going to be available at the tables and they'll walk you through the project. And we really want to talk to you about all the different features. So if you just hold your questions till the end, really appreciate it. Uh, like I mentioned a few slides ago, the traffic near the shopping center is also complicated because there are so many commercial driveways, lots of turning movements in and out. Um, because of that, we're also recommending maintaining two lanes in each direction through this section. The, the good news is um, the street is wide enough and the lanes are currently wide enough that we can narrow them just a little bit and have enough room for bike lanes on the outside. Caltrans, um, their standard lane width is 12 feet, whether you're on the freeway or whether you're on Cliff Drive. So um, on city streets, it's totally appropriate to use a narrower lane width. Dangerous for the bikes. Pardon me? That's dangerous for the bikes. Well, there'll be bike lanes on the outside of the road. So, like I said, uh, over near Mesa Lane, we are recommending two lanes in each direction. Near the shopping center, recommending two lanes in each direction. And the question is what to do in between. Um, one thing we can do is go down to one lane in each direction, just like the restriping that was done a few years ago uh, between Meigs and City College. That maintains on-street parking. And another option is we could just keep two lanes the whole way and um, have a continuous center left turn lane, bike lanes, but that would get rid of all the on-street parking through that section. And generally we try to maintain on-street parking as convenience for adjacent residents when we can. From a capacity perspective, one lane is plenty going through here. It's just that because of the complicated intersection and all the driveways, we kind of need two lanes on either end, but the middle, one lane would work fine. And as well, we would have to get rid of about three parking spaces on the south side of Cliff in between Cooper and Mohawk, um, just because the center left turn lane is going to push everything out a little bit uh, for that particular block. Uh, so the Cliff and Meigs intersection, there's actually a few alternatives that we can look at here. Um, what this drawing is showing is maintaining the existing lane configuration. So nothing changes, we're just narrowing the lanes a little bit on Cliff Drive so that we can get bike lanes in along the outside. We've heard from some residents that people don't really like that merge east of the intersection very much. So right now, there's two lanes that come east, and when they get to Cliff, 
once they get past, it merges into one lane. Right. And some people find that kind of awkward at that particular location. Another alternative, instead of keeping the existing lane configuration, is actually to turn the curb lane into a dedicated right turn lane. So if you want eastbound through lane, and an eastbound dedicated right turn lane. Now because of that, because there's only one lane feeding into the intersection, there only has to be one lane on the far side of the intersection accepting that. So the merge condition goes away. Uh, this is a trade-off as well. Um, what we've noticed in our traffic studies at this intersection is that there are a lot of people that get caught um, behind pedestrians. They're trying to cross the road right there. Um, and, there, and that right eastbound right turn movement is pretty heavy. But if we were to go down to one lane in each direction, the through traffic that does use that outside lane would have to use that single lane. The queues would get longer. Uh, everybody would still get through on the first light. Um, we don't think there'd be a capacity issue there at all, but there might be the perception of a capacity issue just because people would notice longer queues. So that is a trade-off. Um, we actually think this would work quite well and it would help the right turners a lot, and it would get rid of that merge condition. Derek, can I ask you a question, I'm sorry. Where, where do you merge people into the left lane that are going straight? So um, all the way along here, uh, all the way back to Camino Palma would be two lanes in each direction. Um, people would just have to know that when they get to the intersection here, if they want to go through, it's got to move to that inside lane. This is what we call a forced right turn lane. And when we do roll out the maps, uh, this is shown on there, so we will be able to show you that. It would be appropriate signage, I assume, right? Yeah, definitely. It takes warning signs, special pavement markings in order to do what we call a, a lane drop like that. Uh, we aren't, are not, recommending a westbound dedicated right turn lane. The traffic characteristics are a little bit different. There's not as many westbound right turners as there are the eastbound right turners. And as well, most of the people that are in the curb lane along that side, they're destined for the shopping center. They're going straight. Um, so for this particular intersection, what we've shown up there, that westbound right turn lane, we're, we're not recommending that. I think it would work better with uh, the existing lane configuration. Uh, Santa Barbara City College. This is, um, this is the other end of the project. This is their west campus driveway right here. Uh, this driveway is very busy, um, especially in between classes. If you've ever, uh, if you've ever, ever noticed when you've driven by there, there's a lot of students converging on campus and a lot of students trying to leave campus all at the same time. And uh, it, it's very busy, and there's a lot of potential for serious crashes here. So a new traffic signal um, would work well here. Uh, we could extend the one lane section a little bit further up the street. Uh, we do need to open up the two lanes by the time we get to Loma Alta, just for capacity reasons. Um, but we can't find enough room to get bike lanes on the street if we get rid of this median here that's west of the intersection. Normally, raised medians near intersections are good ideas. Uh, what they do is they uh, prevent people from driveways and minor side streets that are really close to the intersection from turning left across busy streets. And that's a safety feature. But in this particular location, the first driveway isn't till the end of the median. So it's not providing any access control. So there aren't any real safety drawbacks by removing that median. So by removing that median, we can move everything into the center of the street a little bit and find enough room for bike lanes on the other side. Okay, that, um, that summarizes really the improvements that we're proposing with this grant project. This, um, this particular grant project, like I said, it's based on the collision history. And based on the collision history, we think these are the types of improvements that we can apply for. We, um, we understand there were many other um, suggestions for the street, especially improved pedestrian crossing, lighting. There's not one grant that's going to pay for all of that at the same time. We're going to have to chip away at this a little bit at a time. And it just so happens that this grant, the bike lane grant, is the one that's coming up first. So I'm going to go through a few more things, just uh, just for your general information about Cliff Drive. Um, future pedestrian improvements. I 
just, just based on all the feedback we got during the relinquishment process, this is a really high priority for folks. And um, when money does become available, we'd like to know what your highest priority intersections are, where to start. So one of the things the, um, your table leaders are gonna be asking you and to fill out on your, um, on your feedback form is where do you want us to start? So that when funding does become available, um, we know where you want to start. Uh, we, we've been asked, why don't we just paint crosswalks across the street? Um, it's a great question. And on really high speed streets that are wide with high traffic volumes, uh, it's really hard for drivers to see pedestrians. And just adding a painted crosswalk and warning signs doesn't make them a whole lot more visible. And pedestrians might have the perception when I'm in this crosswalk, the driver's gonna see me. Um, when in fact, because the street is so wide and the drivers are moving so fast, uh, they don't see them. Uh, so it does take some additional safety features uh, in order to do a, um, a safe pedestrian crossing. This is, a, this is just a concept, some of the features that could be included in, a, uh, in an approved crosswalk on Cliff Drive. Um, curb extensions, and what they do is they reduce the amount of time that pedestrians are in the street. Some people like curb extensions, some people don't. Um, median refuge island, and what a median refuge island does is it gives the pedestrian a place to wait in the middle of the street. So the pedestrian doesn't have to make a long crossing all at once. Uh, street lighting is always a good feature to have in improved crosswalks. And as well, the pedestrian activated flashers, we've installed a few of them uh, on Milpa Street. This is uh, what was done in Milpas and Ortega in 2013. These have worked really well. We're really pleased with how these are working. So um, an improved crosswalk in Milpas could, or on uh, Cliff Drive could include these uh, pedestrian activated flashers. Uh, we've also been asked about a pedestrian scramble at the intersection of Cliff Drive and Meigs. And there's a really long traffic explanation that I'm going to give you as to why it's, why it's not the best solution for this particular intersection. Uh, what these show are the it's, the, it's the sequence of the lights at the Cliff Drive and Meigs intersection. So the first thing that happens is the eastbound and west, westbound left turns go. And then the eastbound and westbound throughs go and as well the pedestrians that are parallel to those movements. And then the northbound movement goes, and then the southbound movement goes. And during peak periods, it takes about 100 seconds to cycle through that. And the average delay for a vehicle at the intersection during the peak periods is about 42 seconds. So what happens if we insert a pedestrian-only phase? And a pedestrian-only phase, I'm sorry, I should have described that. It's where um, all traffic is stopped in all directions, and pedestrians can cross from any corner to any corner they want, even diagonally across the street. That's what a scramble for. So if we were to insert that into the uh, existing traffic signal, sig signal sequence, again we would have <coughs> east and westbound left turns, the through movements, and then northbound, and then southbound, just like before, but then we have to tack on the end of it, the pedestrian movements, and they can cross, like I said, in any direction, even diagonally. Because that's a really big intersection, we have to provide enough time for pedestrians to cross diagonally. It would take almost 40 seconds that we'd have to give pedestrians to cross that. So if we add up the amount of time for all these movements to happen, it's about 150 seconds versus 100 seconds. So what that means is longer red lights, and during the longer red lights, traffic continues to build and build and build, and it's more delayed. And average delay would actually shoot up to about 107 seconds. So um, it's a great idea. It's, this just isn't the right intersection to do it at. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is speed limits. And we also get asked sometimes, why don't we just lower the speed limits to make people go slower? Well, the California Vehicle Code is the, the laws that we have to follow as well, um, tells us how we have to set speed limits. So what we actually have to do is go out and measure how fast traffic is traveling. And we have to set the speed limit based on that. And if we don't, the police can't enforce the speed limit. So unfortunately, we don't have the ability to just arbitrarily lower the speed limit. Um, uh, the speed limits that Caltrans set were <coughs> appropriately set for this road. So um, next steps, uh, if you give us some good feedback, if you like what we've shown you tonight, we will apply for that grant in the spring of 2015. 
Uh, construction is likely to happen 2017. Like I said, we try to time it so that everything happens right at the tail end of when the roundabout is being built, so everything um, completes all at once. Uh, we'll, pre we'll post the results of the feedback that we get from you this evening on our website. And on the handout sheet that you got when you came in, uh, there's a web address that uh, you can go to our website. Um, if any of your neighbors weren't able to come tonight, we're also going to have this presentation uh, on our website as a little movie. They can uh, go through and watch the same slides that we're seeing here this evening. There'll be an online comment form that they can also <coughs> give us some feedback. Uh, as well, if, um, if you forget something that you want us to know, feel free to go to the online comment form and, uh, and comment again.